These are 15 mistakes to avoid when coming to Mexico and be sure to stick around until the end because the last one on this list could put you in a Mexican prison. The first mistake is to bring damaged bills to Mexico. So if you're paying for something in the US and you pay with a dollar bill that has a stamp or writing or a rip or tape or whatever, it's no problem. But if you try to pay with a dollar bill that has one of those things here in Mexico, it's not going to be accepted. And if you go to a money exchange place and you're bringing them damaged bills from the US that have any of those imperfections, well, they're not going to be accepted at the money exchange place either. The next mistake you shouldn't make is to trust a Mexican when they tell you that something isn't spicy. If they tell you a salsa is not spicy, make sure you try a tiny amount of it before you put it all over your food. You have no idea how many times I have almost died in Mexico because I trusted someone when they said it wasn't spicy. It's not that they're lying, it's just that their palate is very different than mine and their palate is much more accustomed to spicy food than I am. This tip will save your life when you're in Mexico. In Mexico, there is so much amazing street food and you should definitely try a whole bunch of the street food. But the mistake here is to go to the street food stands without any people. You might think you're saving yourself time, but you're also risking getting sick as well as not finding the best options because at the busy places, these are the ones that are not only going to be the most delicious, but they generally have better hygiene. And also, like they'll be rotating through the meats and the food a lot faster so they're not sitting out as long, which will help keep you from getting sick when you're in Mexico. When it comes to Mexico, one of the worst pieces of advice I ever received was to negotiate for everything. Someone told me this before coming here and I took that advice to heart and I started negotiating for everything in every situation, whether it was a massage, like buying something from a street food vendor. I remember I was in San Blas Nayarit and there was a vendor selling cups of fruit for 35 pesos and I was trying to get it for like 25 pesos because I thought that's what you were supposed to do. But that's something you never ever do in Mexico. You never negotiate for street food or really any kind of food for that matter. These days, I find myself hardly ever negotiating for anything and basically the closest I come to negotiating a price in Mexico is when I'm like at a store that's an artesania shop or something like that or there's a vendor on the beach trying to sell me a blanket. Well, they'll typically start off with the price higher and if you show interest in an object and then you're like, oh, I don't know, or you like, let me think about it and then walk away, well then the price will usually come down if there's room for the price to come down. For example, I was on the beach in Puerto Vallarta and there was a guy trying to sell me a blanket. The price started at 800 pesos and I showed some interest, but I was like, oh, I, I don't know if I can pay 800. And then the price went down to 600, then 400, and then finally down to 300 pesos. So the price more than halved just by me saying, oh, I don't know. I wasn't even trying to negotiate. I just honestly wasn't sure if I wanted the blanket or could fit it on my suitcase or anything like that. So that's one way that you can discover the fair price of something without actually having to negotiate. And as a general rule, in Mexico, if you're in one of those most popular tourist destinations, so I'm thinking like Cabo, Cancun, Puerto Vallarta, Tulum, Generally in these souvenir shops, in these artesania shops, the prices are jacked way up. For example, I was in a little town in Colima and I saw these little turtles made out of onyx or some other kind of rock like that and they were 100 pesos. I went to Playa del Carmen and I saw the same turtle and it was 1,600 pesos. So obviously in some of these shops and these busy tourist places, the prices are jacked way up. So in these places, there's a lot of room for negotiation. But if you're in some other city, pick some random city, uh, Mexico City, Guadalajara, some other pueblito, there's probably not going to be much room for negotiation there. So let's say you have a phone plan in the US that gives you coverage in Mexico, but then you fly to Mexico, your plane lands, and you turn on your phone and your phone doesn't work. You're like, what the heck, I thought I had coverage. Well, you do, but you have to do one simple thing, and that is to turn on data roaming. So you go into your settings, you click data roaming on, and boom, your phone is going to work in Mexico. The next mistake is to drink the tap water, but let's be honest, you've probably already heard that tip, don't drink the tap water in Mexico. However, what people have more questions about is the ice. Can you have a beverage with ice in it? And the answer is absolutely yes. Every restaurant, every place is going to use ice that has been frozen using filtered water, so ice is no problem. So how about brushing your teeth with tap water? Can you do that? 
Well, it is making you susceptible to a stomach bug of some kind. So if you're coming here on vacation for like a week or two, I would say no, brush your teeth with only bottled water or filtered water. But if you're coming here to Mexico to live, well then I would say, yeah, you can brush your teeth with tap water. It might get you a stomach bug, but losing two days out of your life is not as big of a deal as losing two days out of your seven day vacation being in the bathroom the whole time. And if you're coming to live in Mexico, you're eventually going to get exposed to these bugs at some point. So Montezuma's revenge is going to happen to you. So if you just get it out of the way, well, that will help you move on faster and be able to adapt to life in Mexico more quickly. The next mistake in Mexico is to double tip. It is illegal in Mexico for a restaurant to add a mandatory tip to your bill. However, it does happen, especially in certain places. Like I remember going to Isla Hovash and almost every single restaurant was doing this practice there. Now, typically when they add a tip to the bill, there will be an extra line that says propina or servicio, or it'll be abbreviated to prop or serve. Well, in that case, they're adding a tip to the bill and that is absolutely not mandatory. But a lot of people might not know what these words mean if they're coming from the US or Canada or some other place where they don't speak Spanish. So if you see that tip added to the bill, just, just leave that. You don't have to leave anything else because generally the hope is for you to double tip. You don't know what that means and then you leave another tip on top of that. And someone just messaged me and she said, hey, I'm in Tulum and I was just at a restaurant and there was a line on my bill saying propina. So I didn't leave an extra tip because I know you've told me uh, that in the past in another video. And the waiter was like, hey, why aren't you tipping? And then she said, well, there's a line on here that's tips already included. And the waiter said, no, that's for the staff in the back of the restaurant, that's for the cook staff. And she was asking me, is this person lying to me? And I was like, yes, yes, he absolutely is lying to you. That tip is going to him and not to the cook staff. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful, do me a favor and poke that like button. When you're coming to Mexico, oftentimes it's very tempting to fly into Cancun because it's usually pretty easy to find affordable airfare there. However, I hate flying into Cancun and I would consider that a mistake because when you fly into Cancun, it's like the worst ever first impression of Mexico. Everybody's trying to rip you off and scam you. It's horrible. So I highly recommend you avoid that. But what else can you do? Well, generally another cheap city to fly into is Mexico City. So Cancun and Mexico City usually offer the lowest airfare. So what I would do if I were booking a Mexico vacation would be to book round trip tickets to Mexico City, maybe for a couple of weeks. And then after I arrive in Mexico City, spend a few days exploring the city, going to the museum, seeing the endless attractions there are to see there. And then I would take another flight to a beach destination, one of the lesser known beach destinations. For example, we recently went to Mazatlan, which I would highly recommend. So you go from Mexico City to Mazatlan and you can book very affordable flights. And then you stay in Mazatlan for a week, you come back to Mexico City, you spend a couple more days in Mexico City before you fly back to your home. Now, I would consider this a much better travel itinerary for coming to Mexico than booking round trip to Cancun. And that leads me to the next mistake, which is visiting Cancun instead of one of the many other awesome destinations around Mexico. Go to any other smaller beach destination. I think you're going to have a much better time and a much more affordable trip than going to Cancun. Or you can go visit one of the 132 Pueblos Magicos, or what in English would be called magic towns. You could literally put these on a map, throw a dart, go to that particular Pueblo Magico, and you're gonna have an awesome time because every single one of them has something really cool to offer. I've been to 20 or 30 of them by now, and I've loved every one of them. So go check out some of the Pueblos Magicos around Mexico because there's tons of history and culture and cool things to see and do in all of these little pueblitos around Mexico. The next mistake in Mexico is if you are booking an Airbnb to book anything but the highest rated places, I recommend looking for places that are rated a 4.9 or higher because in general with Airbnbs, people tend to give 
better ratings than they deserve. Like they meet the host and the host is friendly, so then they feel bad leaving a negative review, so then they give them higher ratings than they deserve. However, if you're booking the Airbnbs that are ranked 4.9 or higher, well then I can almost guarantee that you'll have a great experience at that Airbnb. But if you're booking the Airbnbs that are rated like a 4.0, 4.1, heck, even many that are 4.5, a lot of times there are going to be a lot of problems with your stay. The next mistake is not learning some Spanish before you come here. I recommend learning some greetings and learning some numbers. Learning some numbers is gonna help you when you're making various purchases in Mexico to understand how much things cost. So two great free apps to start learning some basic Spanish are Duolingo and Memrise. But if you really want to learn the language and learn how to speak full sentences, I highly recommend Rocket Languages. You can check it out at tangerinespanish.com. That's my affiliate link and it will take you right there. Awesome course, great value for your money. Go check it out. The next mistake applies to those who are driving to Mexico. So in Mexico, there's something they refer to as the free zones. And the free zones are within a few miles of the border, part of the state of Sonora, the entire Baja Peninsula and the state of Quintana Roo. So if you're driving your vehicle outside of those free zones, you must get a temporary import permit when coming into Mexico. It's not too hard to get it, just uh, type in Google temporary import permit Mexico and you will come up with some directions to help you get that. But if you come to Mexico and you drive outside of those free zones without the permit, they can literally confiscate your car and oftentimes the cost to get your vehicle out of impound are more than the entire value of your car. So definitely get that permit if you're driving outside of the free zones. The next mistake is if you're paying cash in Mexico, do not use too big of a bill. For example, if you're buying something for less than 100 pesos, don't pay with a 500 peso bill because it's considered rude here. So what can you do if you go to an ATM and an ATM gives you all 500 peso bills? Well, you can go into any bank and ask for change and they'll give you smaller bills in exchange for your 500s. The next mistake you need to avoid is overstaying your visa. So when you fly into Mexico, they're gonna give you a stamp in your passport and next to that stamp, they're gonna write a number. And that number is the number of days you're allowed to stay in that country. And if you go over that number and you get stopped by immigration, you could end up in a detention facility, which people describe as a jail or a prison, depending on which detention facility they're in. And some people have been reported to be in there for as long as a year. So this is something you absolutely do not want to do. Don't overstay your visa and make sure you leave the country before that number expires. And for most people, the number of days they're going to give you in the country is 180. Now, some people get into trouble here and they see 180 days and they automatically think that they can stay for six months, but they cannot stay for six months because 180 days is slightly less than six months. So make sure you leave before that number of days expires. This next rule is super important. I cannot stress this enough. I've personally met someone here in Mexico who is serving a five-year term in a Mexican federal penitentiary for breaking this law. And she was in a car with somebody who had a gun in her car. Their car got stopped and searched. They found the gun and now she's serving five years in prison and the gun wasn't even hers. So this is do not bring guns or ammunition into Mexico because you could end up in a federal prison just like her. Next, watch this video. It's the unwritten rules of Mexico. It's going to give you tons of tips to help keep you from being the ugly American traveling in Mexico.